Hey guys, my name is Danny and I'm your life and relationship coach. And I wanted to talk about why your husband may be angry with you all the time. This is a topic that's actually come up a few times in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions um, where the individuals who I'm speaking to feel like their partner is always on edge. Um, they don't know if they're gonna get the the happy husband or the angry ha husband. And it's it's it can be very difficult to manage and navigate. Um, and it's difficult to deal with emotionally as well because a lot of the times people feel like it is their fault. What I have found oftentimes is not necessarily that it is their partner's fault, right? So if your husband is mad with you all the time, it may not necessarily be your fault. It could just be external factors that are affecting him and affecting his mood. And he's bringing it home or you're seeing kind of the change in his behavior because of these things that are, that are affecting him on a deeper level. And oftentimes what happens is that you feel responsible. The wife feels responsible for the dip and their husband's emotions and it becomes a bigger thing because they want to know what's going on. They feel like it's their fault. And then their husbands are like, no, it has nothing to do with you. But then it actually becomes a part of the relationship. The, it becomes an argument. So I wanted to kind of go over some of the reasons for why your husband may be angry with you or just angry in general all the time. One of the primary ones that I see often um, in these types of situations is a feeling of lack of fulfillment. Um, so not feeling like they are serving their life's purpose or they are achieving the goals that they wanted to achieve, right? So if your husband had these ideas of where he was going to be at this point in his life and he has yet to achieve that, that can be bogging him down and it can be affecting him emotionally. And that contributes to a lack of fulfillment, not feeling like he is, is, living up to the standards that he set for himself. Um, and particularly with men, the two things that they really pride themselves on is one, their sense of independence and their, their, their self identity. And the second one is success, being successful in whatever it is that they do. So if they are not feeling fully, fully, if they are feeling like they have not achieved what they want to achieve, again, this can be contributing to that lack of fulfillment. The second one, as I just mentioned, is the loss of independence, not feeling like they are their own person anymore. And I've mentioned this before in other videos, there is this feeling, um, well, there's this thing that happens when you get into a relationship, when you get married, even though you are two individuals that are coming together, your two worlds start to kind of intertwine. And if you are not able to set boundaries early on and maintain a sense or a level of independence, you start to feel like you kind of lose your identity along the way. You start to compromise certain things that you would not have compromised. You start to flex a little bit harder on certain things. Um, you know, let's just say, for example, if, if you're in a relationship with somebody who is insecure. So if, if you're a little bit more insecure and you feel the need that to have your husband home by a certain time, so let's say he gets off of work at 5.30 and you want him home by 5.30 or 6, that doesn't really give him the opportunity to maybe hang out with friends or go see families or do extracurricular activities that make him happy. The things that used to fulfill him no longer fulfill him because he does not have the ability to do these things or it's just life in general. It may not necessarily be something that you are doing. Um, they are working long hours at work because you know there's a mortgage to pay and the kids school that you have to pay and the groceries and all that stuff. And even if you are contributing to the household in regards to finances, they may still feel like they have to provide. And in doing this, they start to prioritize their time differently and work and duties, uh, home duties and, and the responsibilities of, of paying the bills and all that becomes a priority. And they start to kind of lose themselves along the way. And when a man feels like he is losing his independence, then it affects his mood directly. And you start to kind of see a dip and they start to feel isolated and trapped and suffocated. And that can have you know, that can result in a reactionary emotions. So, so yelling or, or the changes of tone or general frustration that they are displaying. So again, the second one, like I had mentioned, is just a feeling of loss of independence.
The third one that I see quite often actually is just generalized anxiety and depression. Um, in the world we live in now, there's so much going on. There's so much stimulation, technology everywhere. Things are moving faster. There's a need for more productivity and efficiency. And as human beings, it can be taxing on us. And a lot of the times how that manifests an individual is stress and anxiety. And they may not even be aware of the fact that they're suffering from anxiety or from depression because they are just in the routine of life in this, in this, this cycle of just trying to make ends meet or be productive or feel like they are striving towards something and achieving something. And what ends up happening again, as they start to lose their identity and they start to lose themselves, they start to become more upset with themselves. They start to lose that confidence. They become more insecure. And this kind of feeds into stress and depression and anxiety. So again, it may not necessarily be something that you are doing to them. It's just the, the rigors of life that are affecting them. And it's creating this, this, personality that you may not necessarily like or even be familiar with. The fourth one is just unresolved issues in the marriage. And this would be one of those ones in regards to lack of communication or maybe not the strongest communication style. You don't know how to necessarily deliver messages or communicate with them and the way that they receive the messages, they, they may process it in a way that that's not how you had intended it. So these frustrations and these resentments build up over time because issues are not being resolved. This is probably one of the most common things that I see in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions is a lack of being able to communicate with each other. If you want help in regards to communication, which is again, one of the most common things that I see in my one-on-one -on -one sessions, I have created an amazing product that helps you guys to really understand how to communicate with your partner. It breaks it down step by step, and it starts with the fundamentals of communication. So you really get an understanding of what it takes to communicate with your partner. And then the second half of it is conflict resolution. And it helps so much. I've seen people turn their entire relationships around just on the ability of being able to communicate with each other and understanding what the other person needs in regards to delivering a message. So again, if it's something that you guys struggle with, it's something that you struggle with in particular, I highly recommend purchasing that communication course. The fifth and final one that I see a lot, and like I said, is just personal issues things that they may be going through in their life that they may not want to communicate to you or they just don't fully feel comfortable talking about it just yet. Um, unfortunately, society has created this standard for men where expressing your emotions is considered weak. Um, it's not masculine, it's more feminine. So men have a tendency of bottling up their emotions a lot more than women do. And it's what we call a mask of masculinity. It's just, it's just this mask that guys put on, even though they are hurting inside. So whether it's they had a falling out with a friend or if their boss just told them something at work that about their performance and it wasn't so great, there are many other things that can be happening externally that are affecting him and it's being brought into the household and you feel like it's something that you're doing, which then turns into an argument and then it actually does become part of the relationship. You have unresolved issues because those things aren't being talked about and it's just kind of this negative feedback loop that happens over and over and over again. So again, like I said, keep in mind, it may not always necessarily be something that you are doing. It can just be something that he is going through himself. So very quickly, how, how can you just start to feel like you can reconnect with your husband or, or get him to not be so angry all the time? The first and primary one is communication, sitting down and having a conversation. You know, what is it that your husband needs? What is it that he's going through? What is it that you need? What are your expectations? What are your boundaries? Um, doing it in a way in which you are resolving the conflict instead of contributing to the conflict. Um, are you having these conversations and keeping in mind, is it a fair fight or an unfair fight? Are you, are you, scheduling it out so that you guys are prepared for this conversation? Or are you deciding to have these conversations as soon as he gets home and he's exhausted and tired and just wants to unwind? These are all things that contribute to a productive and efficient um, conversation. And again, these are all things that I cover in that communication product. And it's something that shows you and teaches you how to navigate these types of conversations. But again, like I said, the primary way of starting to be able to get to the root of some of the issues is through communication.
And the second one is just consider his quality of life. Um, is your husband not the same person he was before? And if he is not, why? Are there things that he's not doing that he used to do? Was he more active before? Or did he have more hobbies? Was he able to be a lot more independent before and he's not able to, to do that now? How can you guys have a conversation or come to a compromise in which he's able to, to have a, a little bit more of an independent life and feel a little bit more individualistic instead of just feeling like the relationship, right? Like he is, he is, he, he identifies now with just the relationship. These are some important things to think about. If you feel like you're related to this video, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button down below. Um, I love having open dialogues with people. So if it's something that you related to, or you feel like I missed something, or you just generally got a lot out of the video, please leave your comments down below. I love to read them. Um, if you just want to dive in a little bit deeper and you want more details about, about this subject, you can visit us on happilycommitted.com where we have a multitude of different articles and blogs and videos related to this topic and many other topics as well. Um, if you just wanna book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with one of the coaches um, or myself, you can book directly on the website at happilycommitted.com. Again, I'm Danny, I'm your life and relationship coach. I hope you guys are staying happy and healthy and I'll see you guys soon.